Now, in a couple videos that I've recently done concerning atheism, I have pointed out how many modern Western atheists essentially live double lives. How, while they claim to be atheists, they really live more like Christians. They always do this, these Christians, stealing credit for other people's good behavior as if the only way to not treat other people like garbage is through their religion, and then claim that humility is one of their virtues. Right, let's do this. Greetings fellow space travelers, Bionic Dance here. Today we're dealing with a fellow who, despite calling himself the One Minute Preacher, somehow managed to make a video that's 6 minutes 47 seconds long, which ought to tell you how serious to take him. Over 100 years ago, the atheist who famously declared that God was dead said the same of the atheists of his day. So, funny thing about the skeptic community, we tend to not take people at their word, to not follow ideologues until we've given their speech a good checking through. Unlike religious folk, who'll follow an outspoken chowderhead no matter how loopy his words just cause he claimed they're from God. Just give me a sec, I'll have this ready for ya. Friedrich Nietzsche was born in October of 1844. He grew up in a religious household, his father being a Lutheran minister, who unfortunately died when Nietzsche was only five. He was then raised by his mother and sister. It is said of the young Nietzsche that at school chapel he could read the scriptures with such passion that he would bring his listeners to tears. At age 20, he went and studied theology, in which he then became an atheist. The road to atheism is littered with Bibles that have been read cover to cover. The weird part is how it never seems to register with theists that most atheists have given religion a fair amount of scrutiny rather than relying on blind faith, and found it wanting, unbelievable without suspending logic and reason. Somehow, that doesn't give them pause to wonder why there's such a correlation between thought and unbelief. Then again, perhaps the converse is why. Now, Nietzsche lived around the time of Charles Darwin and his groundbreaking book on the origins of species. Yet, while many atheists celebrated at what they now saw as an explanation of life without the need for a supernatural creator, being a philosopher, Nietzsche had a much more gloomy perspective, and here's why. The traditional Judeo-Christian view is that humans and animals are completely separate. We're in two separate categories altogether. Humans are special, created in God's likeness. We have souls, whereas animals, well, they're just animals. Which isn't pride rearing its ugly head at all. Suppose for a moment that the Bible isn't true. What does that say about the people writing it that this is how they've chosen to describe themselves, to describe their existence. This is an attitude that pervades religion, that some people are chosen or blessed or exalted in some fashion or worthless, worse than worthless, if they don't conform. A huge part of theism is one big ego stroke when you really look at it, which is probably why it's so damn attractive to some people, why so many have revelation-y moments when their life is in the shitter. But of course, Darwinism completely upset that apple cart. There was no longer this distinction between humans and animals. And what Nietzsche saw that many of his fellow atheists failed to see were the ethical implications. Not only was Darwinism a game changer in biology, but also in ethics. You see, like many online atheists today, the atheists of Nietzsche's day thought that rejecting the belief in God, well, that was no big deal, no major consequences, no major rethink required. And rejecting Christianity, eh, that just meant no longer believing in angels and demons, heaven and hell. But Nietzsche said no, it went much further than that. It meant rejecting the entire ethical foundation of Christianity which Western civilization was built upon. Funny thing, Western civilization isn't the only civilization that's ever existed. There have been plenty of other civilizations that managed to not fall into any more chaos than the West without the aid of your particular bad fantasy novel. So no, a major rethink wasn't necessary. Humans could just go on being humans like they've always been. Again, this is just religionoids trying to steal credit for other people's good behavior like it's impossible to avoid being a complete dick cheese without a cloud daddy waving his finger at us. It meant rejecting what Jesus said in his famous Sermon on the Mount of blessed are the meek, the poor, the underdog. Someone explained to me how those people are blessed. It's never made any sense. Hey there, folks who can't seem to stand up for themselves. Good job. Aces. You'll inherit the earth. Promise. 
How about blessed are the badass, those with confidence and the strength to back it up? If anybody is blessed, it's the go-getter with the courage of their convictions. If God's handing out gifts, that one would be a humdinger. Let's just hope they use their power to help instead of hurt. That'd be nice of them. Nietzsche wrote a famous poem concerning everything that I've just said called The Madman, and I highly encourage you to Google it and read it for yourself. Is it a filthy limerick? Everybody loves a filthy limerick. A Scotsman named Angus MacLeod thought he was quite well endowed. He'd lift up his kilt to show how he was built, no matter how unreceptive the crowd. In broad daylight, with a lit lantern in hand, a madman comes rushing into a marketplace, crying, I seek God! I seek God! Now, many of those standing there were atheists, and they thought it was pretty funny, and they began to mock the madman. But with a piercing stare, the madman said to them, Whither is God? I will tell you, we have killed him, you and I. We are all his murderers. But how did we do this? How could we drink up the sea? The one minute preacher is going to go on for quite some time with a whole lot of are we not this, are we not that. None of it really matters to what's being worked up to, so let's skip ahead a smidge. You see, to Nietzsche, being an atheist meant much more than just not believing in any deities. It had far-reaching consequences, and yet most of his contemporaries just didn't get it. Funny thing, believing in a deity has some pretty far-reaching consequences too. And which deity you believe in changes those consequences. But Captain 60 Seconds here seems to think that the god consequences are the default, like they're not something added onto life. And that his god consequences are the default. Any other god beliefs having an impact on the world is just as much an aberration as atheism. Could he live in any more of an echo chamber? This is what confirmation bias looks like when coupled with severe Dunning-Kruger. And in this poem, he ends by the madman throwing his lantern to the ground and breaking it into pieces. I have come too early, he said. My time is not yet. This tremendous event is still on its way, still wandering. It has not yet reached the ears of men. And now more wither this and that unto thee crap, spinning on. This tremendous event that Nietzsche spoke of that had not yet come, that was still beyond the most distant stars, did eventually come with a bloody vengeance upon the Western world in the 20th century. The most horrific example being Adolf Hitler. <sighs> He's one of those. Newsflash genius, Hitler may not have been a Christian, but he also wasn't an atheist. He said, quote, The fact is that we are weak creatures, but there is a creative power. It would be stupid to try to deny it. The person who believes in something which is untrue stands higher than the one who believes in nothing at all. He's also been quoted as saying, You see, it's been our misfortune to have the wrong religion. Why didn't we have the religion of the Japanese, who regards sacrifice for the fatherland as the highest good? The Mohammedan religion, too, would have been much more compatible to us than Christianity. Why did it have to be Christianity with its meekness and flabbiness? He didn't much care for Christianity, but Hitler was religious, like it or not. And his Holocaust hobby certainly had a religious basis. Nietzsche was no anti-Semitic. He would have disagreed with Hitler on many, many issues. Nevertheless, his basic prophecy that a time would come when Christian ethics, which undergirded Western civilization, would be cast aside and replaced by our Darwinian ethics. Darwinian ethics, more commonly referred to as evolutionary ethics, is not based around a kill-or-be-killed mindset as so many theists seem to think. Evolution is survival of the fittest, not survival of the vicious. Compassion and empathy are a huge part of human society. It's part of what makes humanity the fittest species, that social cohesiveness, willingness to work together for mutual benefit. It's what makes the species able to survive, to thrive. No God required. But again, he's trying to steal credit for others' good behavior, as if the only path to playing nice is through his particular faith. And it's not. Prophets of doom have few friends, and this was certainly the case with Nietzsche, who became more and more isolated as he grew older. 
Prophets in general don't have friends among atheists. Unless you want to classify as prophets people who make predictions based on research and can make their case using hard data. I wouldn't, but I've noticed a tendency among theists to try assigning religious labels to secular disciplines, hobbies, and experts, so maybe he would. But prophecy usually has supernatural connotations, so I tend to avoid any related terms unless discussing fantasy, be it the Bible or Lord of the Rings. Obviously, I don't agree with Nietzsche's atheism. I couldn't agree more, though, with his assessment of what it actually means to be an atheist. Well, naturally, the part that best suits his preconceptions and purposes is the bit he agrees with. But I think that, as an atheist, I'm the one who gets to decide what that means, and not some joker who clearly has an anti-atheist agenda and is building a straw man big enough to ride the Trojan horse. Rejecting the god of Christianity. Well, it's like that thread on a sweater. Pull it, and everything unravels. Good. If any sweater needs unraveling, it's your creepy-ass death cult that worships torture devices, mixes into its be-nice-to-each-other doctrine a lot of really superfluous don't-have-a-good-time rules that add nothing worthwhile to life, and believes in eternal torture for not joining up. I think we can do without that kind of shit, thanks. Uh, forgot to mention that everything that I've said about Darwinism does not necessarily make it untrue in the biological sense. We're biological beings. Our social behavior comes from biology, from evolution. You don't get to separate the two like you tried to do with humans and animals earlier in the video. Like I said, survival of the fittest is as much social as it is hunting and gathering. But it's the atheists who just don't get it, according to you. Apparently. Until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please think. Rated, uh, unsubscribed. Oh.